This video is on uh, alternating current or AC, uh, direct current or DC, and also oscilloscopes. It may seem odd that I'm doing these three together, but um, learning how AC and DC works will help me explain how the uh, oscilloscope works and then vice versa. So it should work out. DC is um, the most common form in which we can consume electricity. Um, batteries produce direct current. And essentially, um, all you need to know is that the current just goes one way through the battery and then through your device and then back into the battery, going a single direction. Uh, almost everything we use today is runs on DC, phones, uh, computers, doodads, gadgets. Um, direct current um, is necessary if you have any type of device that has a transistor or a microchip. Um, alternating current um, is not very useful for stuff like that. Alternating current that we get out of a, a wall outlet is alternating back and forth and I'll explain that more in a minute. Um, but First, let me say that alternating current is pretty much only used for um, turning motors um, or transmitting the electricity down the power lines to your house. Um, and then you can run alternating current through a transformer to step up or down voltage. And that's one of the main reasons we use alternating current is it's so convenient to run it into a transformer um, to convert up or down the amount of voltage. Um, you can check out my transformer video to get a lot more information and understand how that works. The number one thing that we use alternating current for is we'll bring it in and convert it to DC or direct current to power our devices. An oscilloscope um, measures voltage and displays it on a graph. Um, and we have two scales. We have the amount of voltage which is on the vertical axis and then the amount of time on the horizontal. Um, there's a lead here um, and here's the lead that you'd actually put on whatever you're trying to measure and then a little ground clippy. Quite a few knobs and buttons on this thing. This one is the power and intensity so if I want to make that brighter I can. Here's my vertical position, so I want to zero it right on that center uh, line. Then a horizontal position here. Just try to get it about in the middle. And then call that good. Room here for two channels here. So we have voltage ranges, which is our horizontal, I'm sorry, our vertical axis. And then one time scale that both channels have to share, which is our horizontal axis. If that didn't make sense, uh, just hang in there. I, I think it's going to start making sense real soon as I start demonstrating uh, how we can measure uh, voltage. So the first thing we need to do is set our time scale. So if we look over here, I'm on one volt. Let's go up to... 5 five volts. So if I'm on the 5 volt scale every line should be 5 volts. I have a 9 volt battery here so if I hook it up it should go up on the positive almost to this uh, second line. And what do you know exactly? So if you go above the center line, it's positive. Now, if I reverse this battery, I can make this line go down. You can see that I have 9 volts negative there. This thing on the left is a just a DC power supply, but I'm going to use it to show how um, these scales work just a little bit more. So if I go and put one volt so that's about one volt if we go over here and look we're on the one volt scale 
So, we would expect that one volt would raise our line up one unit, one square. So, let's look at this again. If we go to two volts, it should go up a whole nother one. Alright, now what if we go to two volt scale? So on a two volt scale, if we go two volts, it should go up to that first line. If I go up to four volts, we go up to two lines. All right, let's switch to five volts. So we're almost up to five volts. Five to the first line. And then 10 volts should be up to that second line and so on. Of course, the center line is zero. If we want to go the other direction, negative, we can switch our power supply leads here and do the same thing, only going in the other direction. But since this is direct current, you can see that it's just pretty steady. It's always either negative or positive. And that's one of the main characteristics of DC is it's always going to be flowing in one direction either. So for testing AC, what I've done is I've plugged into the wall with my little box here is just a, a switch so that I can kill, safely kill the power. I'm going through this little transformer because I didn't really want to have wall voltage going into my oscilloscope. And I'm getting about 16.4 volts AC. So I have that hooked up we can see what's going on here. Right, the first thing we notice that um, we don't have a continuous positive or a continuous negative voltage. Um, AC or alternating current is alternating positive and negative um, 60 times per second or also known as 60 Hertz. So what we see, remember this is the zero volt line. Um, 60 times a second, this voltage will go positive and then it'll reverse and go down and it'll be negative. And it does this 60 times a second. So essentially the uh, voltage is going one way, then it stops, turns around and pushes it back. We're on the 10 volt scale here, so what we would expect, since this is 16 volts, that it would be one line would be 10 volts, and then about halfway would be 15, maybe a little bit more, would be 16 volts. So just for fun, I'm going to turn this time scale just so that you can see what happens when I change it. You can stretch this out. There's this little knob in the middle that if I want to change how many uh, cycles I see within the screen. This is very useful for looking at alternating current or RF. Say RF would be radio frequency, say if you were building a radio or if you had an audio uh, circuit. This thing can see the oscillation or the frequency. So here's another test. I've taken my oscilloscope and I've tapped in to the audio output, I have this cable coming out of my laptop, going to my speakers, but in between, I went ahead and hooked up my oscilloscope so that I can get the audio as well. This is a Windows Media Player, and it actually has a animation they call scope. And I never knew if it was actually really accurate as a scope, but uh, this is pretty neat. You can see that uh, Windows Media Player actually is basically running the oscilloscope on the audio, listening to the uh, frequencies that are generated. Of course, you know, the bigger hits are the bass, which are lower frequencies. And we can play with the uh, time scale here to see different kind of see different types of things here. Kind of cool. Right. 
I'm trying to match it up again where it looks like it's just about the same as that laptop there. And that one's pretty close. If you are messing with things and you think you may have gotten things out of whack, the easy way to zero your meter again is to hit this button down here called ground. So when you hit the ground, it grounds your, your lead so then you can easily go ahead and zero, zero, get things lined up and then go back to analyzing your signal. Um, there are features down here on the bottom that you would use um, if you were using both channels, which I'm not, but you can switch from channel two to channel one, or you could add the two together, or there are features over here, I believe, where you could compare um, this AC, uh, button helps when you're reading AC to keep it kind of hold it otherwise it kind of cycles through Thanks for watching